If you do that, you now have 17 salespeople working on your behalf, provided you can ethically convince the person who controls those 17 salespeople what's in it for them. Now, let me give you a good example of what's in it for them. Let's say that those 17 salespeople produce every day 40 prospects. Out of those 40 prospects, 20 of them convert to advertising that represents $20,000 in sales. And if you pay that person 10% 10, 10 of your sales because they procured the lead and they developed the lead and they endorse you to the lead, that's $2,000 a day over a week that's $10,000 over a month, that's $40,000 over a year, that's $480,000. If I went to you as a business person, you're netting $250,000 a year in a business, and I said, how would you like to double your net and you don't have to do any work? All you have to do is recommend me to your clients. Would you be interested? Okay, let me take it a step further. You send out bills every month. Not everyone will convert that you approach in a business. But if you send out bills, and every month you have an insert that goes into that bill reminding them how to advertise online, and, and all they've got to do is recommend your, you know, you're recommending that, that service where they can advertise online, and you're doing this on an ongoing basis, sending out these bills, it's what I call Chinese water torture. Eventually they wear down and they say, you know, I should be online. Because even the, the person that has the least computer savvy is eventually going to have to cave in and start to use a computer. So all the people that have said, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to, I'm going to not, not going to use a computer until I can talk to it, which, of course, you can talk to computers now. But the fact is, is that even that person is eventually going to wear down and have to be online. I mean, that's where the future is going. So aside from a live sales force, you have the insert rights to someone's direct mail. And that's just with one type of business. You think you can expand your business without hiring any salespeople? And through joint ventures and licensing, that's a very easy thing to do. Mike Loria procured hundreds of thousands of prospects for his business with no expense, only when he made a sale. You know why? Because we weren't going to get to it. It was an area of expertise that required a great deal of understanding and work and focus. We didn't have time for it. It was hard enough, and it, is, it's, it still is hard enough, to do what we do. So we knew that, hey, we're better off because that's obviously a revenue stream that we can develop that we don't have right now. Now you stop and think about it, how many people can you approach that sell to a prospective audience that will do the work for you, that will make the sales for you? Let's take it a step further. Let's say aside from recommending, they do the actual sales for you. And you pay them whatever commission you want to pay. You pay them 40% commission, 50%, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. As long as you're making net profit, you're not doing any work, are you multiplying your abilities? Which is one of the keys to business, is multiplying your abilities. You see, sometimes you get so caught, being, so caught up being in the game that you don't sit on the sidelines and watch the game. And this is just a way of watching the game. If you go to a sales force of people and you have them selling you on your behalf, now let me take it to a more synergistic result, okay? Um, anybody ever seen Valpac? Valpac is, you get an eight by 10, uh, you get a number 10 envelope and you get 15 different offers in it. It's one of the few advertising sources, by the way, that's direct response in nature. One of the reasons you see people consistently advertising in that. Which, by the way, those types of people are the best prospects for internet advertising. They are to, under, they are to understand quantification. They are to track results. I mean, the, the guy who runs a coupon in the penny saver is a lousy prospect for institutional advertising. Because he already knows it doesn't work. I mean, you know, stop and think about it. Domino's Pizza. Um, they run a coupon in the penny saver. They want to see responses. They're going to count those responses the next week when the guy comes back to renew their ad. Oh, I got 287 responses. Ad worked. Because I know that I could afford this much for the ad. Well, they're conditioned already to be direct response in nature. They're the best. The people that are even better, because they don't even know any better, are the people that you can educate institutionally and say, OK, this is how you're advertising right now. You don't even know what you get back as results. How much do you spend a year? 15000 OK. I spend 30000 I spend 60000 you mean you spend this much money and you don't know how it comes back? And the answer is yes, of course. Well, I have to advertise. Well, what if I could show you a way so you could advertise much more efficiently, spend a lot less money, know what works, what doesn't, and expand your business mathematically? Because if you know how much, which is one of the quantities most business people have. This is another factor that when you speak to a business person, even in idle passing, 
you know, Rich Esposito will tell you that he goes out and he speaks to chambers of commerce, rotary clubs, um, all types of business gatherings for free. And if you don't like to speak, you can always find somebody in the local Toastmasters chapter that's a great speaker that will go out and speak for you for a percentage of sales. And Toastmasters is a nationwide organization, and if you're afraid of speaking, you ought to join one because it's an excellent organization. But you can always hire somebody. Rich goes out and develops all of his leads for no cost. Goes out and speaks in front of these people and explains to them how to quantify the results of their business. Well, if you can teach somebody, which most, most business people, this is the quandary that most business people have. Most business people don't know how many customers it takes daily and how many sales per customer or how many dollars earned per customer to pay the bills. Is it any wonder that the majority of businesses fail? I mean, stop and think about it. If you have a business and you don't know how many sales you have to, to make, and you know, sales is, is such a, a terrible word to so many people. Fact is, everybody has to sell something in every business to be successful. I don't care what it is. It, it all results down to what's your revenue? How much revenue do you generate? If you consider this, in every business, you've got to go out and you've got to create sales. But if you don't know what your, your sales have to be to pay your expenses, pretty soon what's going to happen, especially if you're running a business by the checkbook? You're, going to have, you're not going to have enough money to pay the bills. Then what's going to happen? Well, the computer you bought for your business is now your personal computer. You're out of business. But if you sit down in, in the beginning in business, and, and you know, this is a great conversation breaker with any business person, how many sales does it take you to make each week to make your overhead? In other words, how many customers do you need and how much do they have to spend to pay your overhead? Good question. The majority of people don't even know that. They don't, need, they don't know how many leads it takes to get a customer, how many customers it takes to make a sale, what's the average sale per customer. They don't keep the customer list of their customer. For instance, you can make a business just out of teaching people how to manage their customer base and capture names for their customers. Most business, when was the last time you were asked when you went into a business to give your name and address? It's very rare, isn't it? But wouldn't you rather market to people that you've already sold to? Those are the best people to market to. They already have an affinity to you. Most business people don't have any idea of the quantification of their business. So where their frustration goes is they don't know how to increase the size of their business because they don't know what it costs to do so. And since they're inept using institutional advertising techniques, and they say that advertising doesn't work, they don't know how to mathematically grow their business. But if you knew that it cost you $30 to get a customer, and each new customer that you get nets you $120 in profit, then all you have to do, business is relatively simple, all you've got to do is find ways to advertise or sell to create sales at a cost of $30 per customer. So if you can teach a business person how to expand exponentially, Knowing from a quantifiable standpoint that it costs $30 to get a customer, you're going to grow that business very, very rapidly. And if you can show them how to take an advertising concept, for instance, one of the, one of the features that we have on this network, which really attracted my interest, and we'll tell you the Bill Gates story because that's kind of an interesting one because he's been pretty interested in what, we, what we're doing because we're doing something with Microsoft. Um, one of the features that really caught my interest was easy tracks. You know, the concept of being able to test headlines is foreign to people. Now, I'm going to tell you something. All of us could sit in a circle and we could write 10 headlines, and all of us would say, these are the best two headlines. And we would run them, and we could run all 10 of them, and, and we could be totally wrong. We might be right, but we could be totally wrong. You'll never know until you test. So, one of the things that Sean Brunner, who's in our current show and is a student, he said, hey, why don't we create a system that really forces people to test headlines? Now, first of all, most business people don't even use headlines, but he's created a system to test headlines. Stop and think about it. Business person now, for the first time, has not only been illuminated about quantifying the results of their business and using direct response techniques, but now we've taken them to another level of understanding where they're actually testing. And they're out there testing the results of what they're doing. Now, if you're a business person, and I've just said what I've said the last half hour to you, would you be intrigued? Okay. Now, if I went a step further and I said, 
By the way, you know, what's the lifetime value of your customer? If I said, you know, Alan, you've got all these customers. When they come in and they become a customer, and this is interesting. I've got a friend who owns three dry cleaners here. Um, dry cleaning business here that he's had has been in business for like 45 years. You know, most expensive dry cleaners here. I tell him that too. So. But uh, at least they don't ruin your clothes. I mean, they, they, they're, they're by far the best. They are the most expensive, but they're by, by far the best as far as quality. Stop and think about it for a second. Uh, average person goes into a dry cleaner and spends what, $20 a week? Is that conservative? I mean, you know, women, they go get a dress done, it's five and a half dollars. Men get a suit done, it's seven bucks. A shirt's two bucks now. Pants are three fifty. Okay, it's really easy to rack up $20. $20 every week, let's say you vacation for two weeks, that's $1,000 a year, each customer that comes in. Most businesses never even think about that. They never even think what their customer's worth. Most businesses don't have any record of their customers. If you're a person that just can compile, compile the records of their customers in their database and show them how to increase their business just by offering their customers more of what they already bought in a more charming and, and enlightening manner, in a more compelling manner, their business can instantly explode. I mean, all of you realize that just by testing a headline, you could triple the amount of prospects. You could easily double them, and you could easily increase them by 30 or 40 percent. And that's what that old easy track system was about, was to teach people how to test headlines. Now, with all the things that I've said to you, if you could look at a business person and say, by the way, you advertise in the yellow pages, you advertise on all these other things, none of your ads are direct response in nature. You know, let's assume that all the advertising that you do is worthwhile and has a value, but let's at least take direct response advertising that we've now pioneered, refined, tested, on the internet, which is, I think, the best value of the internet is that you can test things quickly, get results quickly, get feedback quickly, and then bring it into play through other things. It's a great vehicle for testing items very, very quickly that you think are going to work. Now you can take that and plug that into all your other advertising to make it more effective. Now you've already taught the person how to procure a customer and know what they can afford. Most people have never been asked that question, what can I afford to pay for a customer? Their accountant doesn't know to ask them. Most accountants tell business people to stop spending so much money on advertising because it's not working. But if you're advertising, it's a, it's a true statement. Most accountants tell people you shouldn't, shouldn't spend this much money on advertising because, you know, it's kind of going down the drain. But if you knew that your advertising is bringing back a customer at your target cost of $30, couldn't you expand your business provided you could find ways to advertise for $30? Provided every time you advertise, the customer comes in at $30? Most people don't even think about that. And so when I, when I go into the concept of licensing and getting joint ventures set up, if you stop and consider this, most businesses don't realize that they're already making an effort with a 5% extra effort, they could make 30% more money because their overhead's already factored into their initial sales that they make. If you can show a business person to work on your behalf, and I'll, and I'll go where I wanted to just a few moments ago synergistically, you take a radio station. Selling radio advertising, I'll, I'll tell you from experience, is very difficult. I ran a radio station years ago in the southwest in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, radio advertising is very tough to sell. And has anybody ever bought radio advertising before? Okay. Radio can be all over the board as far as results. And uh, most people don't even track radio advertising. At the same time, if you turn on the local radio stations, there's tons of radio prospects. If you helped radio stations by packaging internet advertising and selling it to them as a premium, in other words, it becomes a bonus. You know, I sell you radio advertising. I work for, you know, WABC, and I'm selling you radio advertising. And by the way, when you buy this package so I can sell you more advertising, you'll also get free internet advertising for the next six months. They'll design a site for you. They'll do all the thing. And, you know, the nice thing about this is you'll know how many customers visit your site. And by the way, in your site, unlike radio advertising, because in radio advertising they have to call your business and they have to come to your business or the, you, know, you have to ship them out the product or you at least have to have contact with them. With this internet site, you don't have to sp speak to anybody. You can set it up so they can call, but we can make sales by remote control. They don't have to speak. And they could even make sales on Saturdays or Sundays. Gee, this is a whole new foreign concept to somebody. But you could actually pack package this advertising as a premium for someone else to sell. Or you can give them a commission to sell it. They're already making a sale on a product that's tougher to sell. I'm going to tell you right now that business people, what they want to hear 
when they, and this always gets back to selling what people want to buy. What a business person wants to hear is if they spend money, is it going to come back? <laughs> it's the number one thing they want to hear. How am I going to get my money back? How do I know it's not going into a dark hole? And so joint ventures and licensing can be really the easiest way to expand any business, provided that you show the person that you're doing a joint venture with uh, what's in it for them. Mike Luria basically said, look, I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars for every account. We represent 7% of card services new accounts. That's a lot of accounts, okay? At the same time, we also solved a problem for students where for the first time, they could go out and uh, get a merchant account. I mean, previously they had to go through banks and you know, go through a lot of hoopla. They couldn't get a merchant account quickly and they got at a lousy rate. A lot of our students had told us that they got pitched on four, four and a half percent and 3.8 percent rates much higher cost to get the merchant account on top of that. We picked up a rate of 2.05%. That's a great rate. I mean, for a mail order merchant account with no signature required, that's a real, real good rate. Next thing I want to touch upon is uh, one of the things that most business people don't realize is the margins within their business. Um, they understand what it costs them for what they're selling, but they don't understand how directly relative it is to their uh, profitability. I want you to stop and consider something. Everyone here buys clothes. We know that because there's no nudists in the room. So we, we, know, no, we know that that's a safe assumption from a marketing standpoint. Very, very big industry, the apparel industry. As a retailer, does anybody know what the markup is on clothes? A lot of times that a retailer will buy clothes and mark it up maybe uh, one time or one and a half times. In other words, if they buy a dress for $30, they'll sell it for $100. Uh, sometimes they buy it for $50, they'll sell it for $100. But the markup is not that huge. Now, how would you like to be in a business where before you ever get started with any expenses, 40 to 50% of your cost is in your product? Do you think it's tough to be in that business? Do you think it's impossible to have a 60 or 70% profit margin in that business? Okay. If you went into a business and you have a, a $1 cost and you sell something for $35, it's a lot easier to have a higher profit margin, right? Because fundamentally, the cost of your product that you're, you're selling to somebody is much lower. Correct? Okay. So if you, if you stop and consider this, most business people have a flaw in their business. The flaw is their margins. I'll give you, I'll give you an example relative to dentistry. This is a funny one. Um, my, uh, my partner and my wife go and they get the, uh, and I haven't gone yet. Now, now I feel really self-conscious about it. Um, everybody has seen ads on TV before, Vanna White's Natural Smile or Perfect Smile. Um, Dr. So-and-so's perfect white and you know you, you put this stuff in there and you put the things in here and you think you're gonna play football and and you know they, they look like you know the the things that you used to wear teeth guards for uh, mouth guards for football or basketball and you wear those around and you you know your teeth become white um, those products will always sell by the way always sell people are into vanity um, my partner goes and he gets his uh, teeth whitened and I think the pitch was $250 uh, upper and lower each. And he negotiated down to $250. And, you know, of course, my question was, well, why is it better than the stuff you see on TV? Well, it just is. And, of course, after two weeks, his teeth are, you know, so white you need, a, uh, you need sunglasses. You know, I mean, that, that, everybody tonight, when you see him, start looking at his teeth. <laughs> He'll be self-conscious about it. But, uh, so my wife gets the same thing. And, uh, you know, it, it's just amazing. After three or four times using it, her teeth are much, much whiter. And we all naturally have yellow or gray teeth. I guess that's naturally what our teeth go to. But if, if you stop and consider this, what's the margin on that product? It's going to be very, very large. I mean, what, what would typically be the margin on that? Five, six, seven to one? Five, five to one. Five to one. Okay. If a business, and I just want you to grasp a hold of this because it's what most businesses miss. Business sells something on a three to one margin. Okay, if you can teach them how to add something onto their each sale or every other sale or every third sale that's on an eight or nine to one margin, what happens to their business? Okay. Now, when was the last time you went to a business person? And this gets back to you in consulting with business people about advertising. Most people are approached about advertising and marketing with a very self-serving approach for the person offering that service. It's never what's in it for them. It's, it's what's in it for me. And the business person only cares about what's in it for them. If you went to a business person, you said, look, I know how to increase your sales and your profitability 
instantly. Now here's what I'll do. I'll create your website advertising. I'll expand it. I'll consult with you. I'll show you how to test your website advertising and expand it into other elements of all the marketing that you do. But not only that, but let's take a look at our business. What's happened? You've reversed the role where you're not somebody just schlepping along. And it gets back to what I said. Let me see all your ads. You now have an interest in what they've done, why it worked, why it didn't. If you're smart enough to point out, well, you didn't have a headline here. You don't have a guarantee. You did, did you test any pricing? No, you didn't do that. OK, do you have any extension numbers? You don't even know if calls came in from that, right? OK, well, here's four things that we can do immediately to start to make your business better. If you look at somebody and say, and by the way, as part of the service, what I'll do, which Rich Desposito will go into a lot of the specifics that he's done. And so if you think that what I've brought up will be a redundancy, it probably will when he comes up here and speaks about a lot of these things, but you'll see a practical application of how he's done it. If you go to a business person and say, if you do all these things with me, here's what I'll also do. Now, what would you do if somebody walked in and said, I'm going to show you, Alan, how to increase your business by 30% net profit instantly, provided you'll do what I tell you to do, and rather than think it's a crazy idea, will you at least try it? Great. Super. Now, what would you do if you're a business person? Okay. Let me give you a great example. I go to a, a really nice health club here. I'm one of the few people that goes to the health club. You know, I, and, I, and I, don't, I, I probably go eight times a month. Now you stop and think about it, I pay, I pay $60 a month. Um, I won't tell you how many times my wife goes because this will be on tape. <laughs> and, and if she sees the tape, then we might have to edit that out. But uh, she, she might smack me or something. But, but, um, but the fact is, um, anybody here got in any competitive body uh, building at all or any weightlifting at all? Okay, all right. What should you have after your workout, a couple hours after your workout? Protein. Protein. Okay, we all know we should have protein. All right. Now, I walk out of this health club every time I go, and they have these protein shakes. Okay? Now, I don't have time to go down and, you know, get that half pound of bacon, fry it up, and get my protein in. kind of want to, but um, I don't have the time to do it. Now, what should they do as soon as I walk out of that health club as I'm on the way out? <laughs> right. Now, what do you think the markup is in those protein shakes? Probably 10 to 1? It's, pe you know, it's peanuts to make this stuff. It's water and you know, other stuff. I mean, it's, it's peanuts. It's probably 10 to 1 markup. So I'm speaking to the owner of the business. And uh, you know, th there's one thing you'll find about working with business people is you can't help someone unless you want, they want to be helped. That's, that's very true about anything in business. But if you stop and think about it, Rich Esposito will give you success story after success story after success story with businesses that did what he told them to do. And now he's like this heralded uh, knight in white shining armor. And, and now what's happened is so many other business people have expanded his business. And he's got six offices, Judy? Six offices throughout the Northeast. And you know, how many people are here from the Northeast? I grew up in the Northeast. People in the Northeast are the most skeptical people, hardest people in the world, in my opinion, to sell because they're totally jaded and they're totally negative. That's not true at all, is it? But, uh, but, but <laughs> what are you, crazy? Um, but, it's, it's very true about that, but what's happened is he's positioned himself in a unique manner. But you stop and think about it. This friend of mine that owns this health club, he, uh, I said, well, look, you know, if you just did this, 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 and this, and this is while I'm working out. Every time I, I got to come in there at the times when, you know, when he's not there, because whenever I'm working out, this guy always wants to talk to me. Oh, well, you know, here's what I'm trying. You know, it's like he's, he's getting free consulting, you know. But he's a real nice guy, and, and I have a genuine interest in um, seeing business people succeed. I, I enjoy hearing about business people succeeding. But one of the things I've found is that uh, most business people won't do what you tell them to do unless you ask them to pay for it. Very true. I mean, they, there's no such thing as free advice. They've got to pay for it. And they won't do it unless you, you know, make them pay for it. Um, at the same time, if I told him to write me a check for $2,000, he'd do everything that I tell him to do in an hour's time. And, but if you think about it, how many businesses, whether it's a, a dry cleaner, a restaurant, uh, uh, a weightlifting place, fitness club rather, um, how many businesses have something that on the way into the business, on the way out of the business, they could sell at a higher margin than their three or four to one markup? Just about everybody. Could they create products that they could sell beyond their local area and expand their business? Think about it. If you became very proficient in running a health club, and you were able to license a technique of marketing and sales that creates memberships at a quantifiable cost that's 28% lower than the industry average, would you able, be able to license that for $15,000 a year to other people in non-competitive areas? 
Okay? So I'm just opening up a kind of a world of opportunity to you that most people never ever see in any business because they're so busy working in the business that they can never work on the business. I think that timing is so relevant to people making money that I said, look, if we get into the market, and we're not the first ones in, you know, when you see a company like City Search out there, you realize obviously people want to buy localized internet advertising much more so than national or international type uh, internet advertising. So I said to myself, well, gee, you know, all we've got to do is recreate it faster and bigger because they're selling internally in a vertical fashion. They're within their company. They haven't expanded beyond their marketplace. They have to create sales forces that go into a marketplace. And so they're on a very slow expansion. We'll have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of cities up in North America, the United States, and Canada. We'll have you know, cities up over in Europe. Uh, and we'll do it all before these people wake up because we'll have the ability to expand to more people quicker because we, we can get to more people that can distribute these products. So the, the whole objective of this is if you get out into a marketplace and you do what Rich Desposito has done and you become the preeminent leader in a new emerging growth industry that everybody is told to be a part of, where are you going? Give you, you're going up and you're not going away. Give you a great example. There's a, uh, there's a company that I won't mention in the infomercial business. Um, many of the people that have become very, very wealthy in the infomercial business, the infomercial business existed back in the 50s, which do, any of you old enough to remember old infomercials, you know, black and white? Inf I remember watch, when I was a kid, I would watch uh, Channel 9 in Manchester, New Hampshire, and it would come into the Boston area, and I would watch a guy pitching pots and pans. And I, you know, and I'd grab my mother and say, this is the coolest thing in the world, we gotta get these pots and pans. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, it was, it was funny because uh, the FTC, or the FCC, um, outlawed the usage of infomercials. They were so effective that they kind of outlawed them, and then they brought them back, you know, some years ago, about a dozen years ago. And, uh, you know, I, I knew infomercials were effective when, at, at the time when my kids were three and uh, five, or about two and five years old, they come up and said, Dad, we've got to order this stuff. I mean, you, you know that they're, you know, and kids sit and watch infomercials, which is kind of fascinating to me. But the, the interesting thing about it is that there were people that recognized that there was an emerging industry as soon as the infomercial industry started. Um, Guthy Ranker, who many people have seen on television, uh, they've done Personal Power, which has been one of their big shows, and Power Rider, which was a show that Fran did last year. Um, the Victoria Principal shows they built. That's a that's a hundred million dollar a year business. That cosmetics business. And and by the way, most of the customers that come in, they lose money acquiring those customers, but because the customers are on an automatic renewal of the product, uh, that's a very very profitable business. So that's a good example of, of a company that can lose money on the way in, but because it's a consumable product long term, they can make money. But there were companies that started, and. Uh, some with very capable people, as soon as they recognized there was an industry, and uh, some with not that capable people, but they were just in the right place at the right time. And I'll give you an example. And it's, it's relevant to the internet and why the internet is, is great timing. There's a company that's an ad agency that all the cable stations said, hey, you know, there's a way for us to get rid of our overnight time. Because when you run a television station, you have to pay for programming. Now, if you can get somebody to pay you for programming, you're a lot better off. One, you don't have to pay for programming. And two, you're selling a time slot that you normally wouldn't have sold. You know, for instance, if you turn on daytime television in Orlando, you're not going to see a lot of local commercials at 10 a.m. in the morning because they know that there's not a lot of audience there. So that's a hard time slot to sell. So as a person, I, I used to run a television station years ago that's a Fox affiliate. Um, and what I always try to do when I go into a, a difficult situation in business, I say, okay, how can we bring in revenues for what we normally use as expenditures right now? And I took over a TV station, and I started sell pay, selling paid programming. Well, the people that first got in, and this one company in particular, and I won't give you their specific name, they got into the industry, the infomercial industry, and right out of this person's bedroom. I mean, this lady started right out of her bedroom. And she secured when CNBC and USA and all these networks said, we're going to sell cable time, she said, I'll tell you what, I'll be a representative. And I'll sell it to all these yahoos out here with infomercials that have these exercise gadgets and walks and all these other things. 
And uh, one of our students, who I mentioned earlier, Joe Polish, sent me a tape that Dennis Miller did on infomercials. And it was, uh, I, I need to write Dennis Miller and tell him how to do an infomercial. But he was satirizing uh, infomercials. But this, this lady got in the right place at the right time, tied up a lot of the cable time. She, in my opinion, isn't a super adroit business person, but she was in the right place at the right time. Net result, she has a business that does $60 million a year. And you know, a lot of times when you have a business, often what it is is timing. And, and our whole purpose with this, and as I said, I hope it doesn't sound too arrogant, but my whole purpose is, is I, I really believe that if we get in the right place at the right time, that it's hard for someone to come in and compete. There were two things that I recognized about the infomercial industry when you have a personality-based product. I knew, one, it's hard to break into it. I knew if you could break in, it's hard to break out of it. It's hard to fade away. And uh, that's evidenced by people that have had successful personality-based products over the years. I mean, Tony Robbins has been on for years. Carlton Sheets has been on for years. They realized that once they established a niche in the marketplace, they could be out there for years. Well, that's the same thing in an emerging growth business. You know, the fact is the Internet's not going to go away. I mean, it's, it's now just, when you see, you know, there's a new infomercial out for web TV, okay? When people see that they can just put it on their TV and they don't even need to be computer literate, it makes it even more, real, more of a realization to them. And my point is, is that if you get out there now and establish a marketplace and you establish yourself as a preeminent authority, I mean, Rich Desposito has established himself with a lot of business people as the authority on marketing on the Internet. How do you become an authority? Paul Hartini will tell you tomorrow who will be speaking. Um, he claimed he was one. <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he, because there was no one else. There was no standard of being an authority. I mean, you stop and think about it. I mean, whenever you can create yourself as, as the preeminent spokesperson for it, you're now the authority. There's no one else. So he's like the consumer advocate for teaching business people how to be successful on the Internet, and it's resulted into a very, very successful business. And one of the things that Paul Hartini will go over and, and this is something I brought up with Paul two years ago. You know, just the sheer fact, aside from representing people on the internet, if you can create publicity and free advertising for business people, if they don't have any ad costs in acquiring a customer, I mean, the, I talked about Spiller Anderson. Spiller Anderson had a product, the Miracle Soaper, and it had a high cost of goods. Okay? So he had this product out there, very, very high cost of goods. It was like 40% cost of goods, which, as you know, Historically, with my formula, that's way too high for direct response. How he countered that is he did all of his advertising through press releases, and in the first month, netted $8,000. He knew that every time he sent out a press release and it got published, it would bring him back about $3,000. Every time. And he knew for so many press releases he sent out, he'd get back $10,000. All he did was work on free advertising. <coughs> As an acquaintance of mine said a few years ago, it's hard to, it's hard to fail in direct marketing if your, ads, if your customers don't cost you anything and your sales don't cost you anything. It's very true. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. So a alongside what I'm bringing up and what we're focusing on and what our direction is, and as we'll go into a lot of specificity about it today, the fact of going out and creating customers for people in the right image, press-wise, two years ago I said to Paul Hartoon, I said, you know, one of the best things you could do is create a business out of becoming a publicity agent for businesses. You know, when you have those articles running on your behalf and they're published for free, that's like manna from heaven. I mean, you're getting people to call your business and come to your business as a result. And in some countries, they've actually outlawed people that do advertorials. Like, for instance, I have friends in Australia. You can't run an advertorial ad. In other words, an ad that looks like an article. I'm sure that you see them in newspapers and magazines here in this country, and you usually have to see, usually see a disclaimer that says this is a paid advertisement in very, very small font. But they're interesting. They're usually very, very educational. Anybody ever seen the golf ball ads and the golf uh, product ads that run from a company in Connecticut? Golf ball flies so far that golf courses could become obsolete. <laughs> you know, and as a golfer, you read those and you go, well, heck. <laughs> you know, and you're thinking, how can I paint Titleist on this ball and get into the nearest tournament? You know, I, I want to hit the ball 400 yards also. But the, the point is, is publicity is a, a very, very good factor as far as business is concerned. And, and what I'm bringing up is really what, what we want to establish is a network of people that have a business that they don't have to worry about the administrative factors and, and now being involved with the Internet and all the things that we've had to do. 
there's a lot of support and uh, we've gone through a lot of expenditure to build this network. But they don't have to worry about that. All they have to do is establish themselves as, as the timing is ripe right now into a long-term business. The great thing about advertising is that people buy it over and over again, especially when it works. And you know, when you look around here, um, there's all kinds of rags that you'll pick up in the grocery stores. I've got a friend who owns a, a local rag here, um, and you know that's how I refer to them because it's it's you know it's it's cheap newspaper, and he publishes a uh, TV guide, and he makes a very very comfortable living. You know, mid six figure living, uh, plays more golf than I do, and uh, he's the only guy that I've ever played golf with that can hit a golf ball, have his beeper go off, and be on the phone as soon as he's hit it, and take care of it before the next shot. Um, but he's, he's developed a very, very strong business. It's not going away. It's also the type of business that you can sell. And my whole point is, is that every business that you come in contact with, they don't even realize most of the time who their customers are, who their prospects are, how many prospects it takes to get to, to become a customer, and how, they, how can they quantifiably build a business if they don't know that. Now, do you think that any of the things I've mentioned in the last hour would be of a uniquely remote interest to any business person? Because most business people are out there struggling to make their payroll, and they're frustrated because they're stuck in a business they don't know how to expand it. And I'm just giving you a variety of ways to expand a business. I mean, as a dentist, if you'd known just a couple of the things that I've just gone over, do you think you would have made any more money? Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, do you think you would have come up with a technique that you could have licensed out of the dentist at some point? Oh, yeah. Made a lot of points. I mean, as an attorney, do you think some of the things that I brought up would make you any more money? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you paid to get prospects you didn't know why they bought from you. And, and, and as a side note to this, bringing it up, one of the things that we found out uh, over the years is people will tell you the truth about why they didn't buy if you ask. And that sounds really simplistic. And they'll also tell you why they buy if they're buyers. Um, interesting thing, I, I used to go in and, and take over companies and fix them that were losing money or they were bankrupt or insolvent and, um, and turn them around. And I did a uh, couple of things that were kind of interesting in the process. I would always find out who they'd sell to and, um, and also who they didn't sell to. And I would go speak to those people. And whether it was on the phone or in person, I would go and ask them um, why they, you know, they didn't buy from them or why they did buy from them. What did they like about them? And uh, people would think, you know, gosh, this, you know, this is just so brilliant that you're doing this. Most business people never go and speak to customers. They never speak to them and ask them why they're doing something right or why they're doing something wrong. And usually, it's, it's, like, it's like when you were in second grade. If the teacher would have given you all the answers to tests, school would have been a lot easier. Well, in business, getting the answer to the test is finding out why customers buy and what they don't buy. And when you stop and think about it, when you ask a customer what they don't like, you can usually correct it. I mean, our business has made tons of mistakes in its growth. Any business does. But usually what we try to do is figure out, okay, well, that was stupid. That was our fault. Let's try to correct that and try to create a system to correct that. We didn't know unless we asked people or unless we listened to people. If you go out and you have a business person, I mean, one of the, the great advantages that you have is that you're in a different position as a result of just the last 70 minutes. You're in a different position versus other people that are out there trying to build a business as far as direct marketing, any type of advertising. Because now you're in a consultative role. And you'll really understand that when you meet Rich Desposito. But the fact is, is if you go out to a business person and you recognize for them what's right with what they do and what's wrong with what they do and how simply they could adjust with what, with what they have to offer, and as a result of that, by making those adjustments, by creating a unique and compelling story as to why the benefits that they have to offer are better than the competitors, by tracking how much it costs to get customers, how much it costs to convert customers, if you combine just those few things together, you can make their business dramatically better in a short amount of time. You can do the same thing that I did where you go in and make twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars for two or three weeks work, rescuing some company that was afraid to go out and ask their customers what was wrong with it. And it's not that hard to do. I mean, I have twenty two year old uh, I have a twenty two year old student who uh, does marketing consulting to businesses. Makes about eight thousand dollars a month, doesn't work that hard, and just goes out and does the same things that I'm going over right now. But if you stop and think about it, most business people don't even know where to start with these things. And the, the point that I'm bringing up, what, what, what you'll find with Rich Desposito 
is what he's done is he's combined the internet as a vehicle to sell marketing knowledge. And at the same time, aside from fixing and creating a business to be much more profitable and productive, he's got a long-term attribute and asset in selling someone advertising. And he's not going to go away because the business person realizes this is the most valuable person I can speak to in a day's time.